Good morning. Um, it's so good to be here, aren't you guys? So glad we have the internet and the Zoom that we can connect. It'd be so much better if we can meet in person and hopefully we can do that soon. But I'm just so glad we can do this every Sunday morning right now. So today we are going to take a break from the Gospel Project curriculum and we are going to talk about the book of Amos for a few weeks. Does anyone know or heard about the book of Amos? Have you guys seen it in the Bible? Well, today, after I speak, um, I want you guys to open your Bibles and try to find the book of Amos. It's a book in the Old Testament with nine chapters. Okay, so I'm going to show you this map. I don't know if you can see it properly, but what I want you to know is that Israel was divided into two kingdoms, a northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Up here was Israel and down here was Judah. And I want you guys to see it because you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. Because today we're going to talk about Amos. He was a shepherd, just like Lisa said, from a place called Tekoa in Judah, so which is the lower part. And you know what? God was going to use him as a messenger. I don't know if you guys like to be messengers. Do you guys like to be messengers? When you are a messenger, do you like to deliver good news or bad news? Well, God had some heavy news for Amos to take to the nation of Israel. And it wasn't just to Israel. It was to the neighboring nations. He was judging them too, because they were doing some evil things to people, to other humans. And God was not okay with that anymore. And so you see all the red circles. They were, Amos had to go deliver a message about their judgment too. And then he, I will go on. And so God was not happy. Now, if we were to think about it from the outside, it looked okay. I mean, Judah and Israel, they were having a good time, it seemed like, from the outside, because they were at peace. There was no war going on at that time, and people were getting richer. The economy was getting better, and so some people were getting richer, and we will find out how they got rich. But yes, they were getting richer, and they built more shrines all over the place so that people can go and worship other gods. Uh-oh, that sounds a little weird, right, guys? Other gods, we know. Do you guys remember who Israel was? It was God's chosen people, the nation that God uh, chose to bless the whole earth with through. And remember, he's the one that took them out of slavery in Egypt. He walked with them for the 40 years in the wilderness, in the desert. They had a relationship with God. So that's Israel. And they had all these different shrines now where they can go and worship other gods. Doesn't that sound a little weird? Because we know that Israel had one God. And don't they remember the law that God gave to Moses? And that law that said, only love God and only God. And it said, also, never bow down or serve any carved image of a God. And here we hear in this passage that they had all these places to go to to worship other gods. Now, boys and girls, that was a problem, right? Um, I think they forgot. They forgot that they had a relationship with God. And you know what happened? Their life did not align with God's word. And so what happens when we don't follow or obey God's word and when we don't um, read it and know it, then you know what happens? Someone else or something else is going to lead us and it's going to be away from God's truth. And so they were... So they went to these shrines, and I think they thought they were worshiping God, um, but God did not accept that because they continued to live in sin. And, you know, as people of God, they knew what God wanted. They knew what God hated, and they continued to live in a way where God could not tolerate. Now, God called a shepherd named Amos. And he, he gave them a message and it wasn't just to Israel, but you know, you remember the red circles that I showed you on my map? It was to them too, because they were not treating other people right. And then he turned to Judah and said the message to Judah and Judah, it was because they forsaked 
and they they did not keep God's commands and they did not hold on to God's commands and they allowed lies to take them away from God's truth. Oh, Judah was in trouble. And then finally, Israel, boys and girls, after Amos talked about all these nations and Judah, I'm wondering if when Amos was saying that, if Israel was like, mm, yeah, that sounds bad. And I'm wondering, because sometimes we think that other people's wrongs and sins are worse than what we have. And boys and girls, the truth about it is that sin is sin. God treats sin justly because God is just and he is fair. And so it was Israel's turn. And God sent Amos for this. And he said, oh, you're treating the poor like objects. Um, you're getting richer and richer because you are cheating the poor and you're selling them. And boys and girls, I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about you're selling the poor into slavery. And the Bible says for a really, really low uh, cost, a value. You're putting a value on these people um, and, and you're humiliating them. And they took from the poor, the little that they had, right? And even told the prophets that God sent to them, they said, don't prophesy. And so God was very upset and he was not able to tolerate that sin anymore. Children, if we were to understand why this is a problem, we have to understand who God is. God is holy, which means that he's separated from everything in creation. There is nothing that we can compare God to. There is nothing in creation like God. God is God. God is holy. And because he is holy, he calls us to be holy. And children, there was a problem. And the problem was um, that as God's people, they were not reflecting who God was. They were not reflecting who they were as God's people. And you know, we can learn today in today's passage, what God thought was really important for him, he cared so much for the poor. It wasn't something that he thought, oh, that's, that's too bad. No, he really, really gets upset and cares. And as God's people, God calls us to be like him. And boys and girls, we can, we can get close to the Bible, to get read through it, find out who, who God is, find out what he's like, because then the words of God is going to lead us and we will go out and we can be um, God's vessel and God's light and we will look more and more like Jesus. And so boys and girls today, what I want you guys to remember is that God cares for the poor and God cares for the way that we as God people, what do we look like? How are we living? And he wants us to reflect him and his heart. Whatever God thinks is important, we need to think it's important too. And so boys and girls, I just pray that this week and going forward, we will continue to find out um, God's heart and that that heart will be our heart. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for your love and just your, uh, your justice, that how much you love justice. Father, help us to be led by your words and nothing else. Help us to love you, God, and nothing else. Allow you to be the first in our life. And I know sometimes um, a lot of things go in front of you. But Father, we pray that you would just help our eyes to be open so that if there is anything that takes first place, that you would help us to see that, that we may confess it and bring it to you. Father, we know that we can't do things alone and we need your help and that with you, nothing is impossible. We pray for the children this week that as they go back to school and as they're online, Father, that we would be um, your salt and light and that people will know that we are your children because of the way we love. Father, we thank you so much for showing us your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.